a very defeating feeling when we want to get things done, but we feel completely drained. And so luckily, there is an ever-growing body of research that suggests nutrition and our food choices can actually help to fight fatigue during the day, and it can also help us sleep more quickly and soundly at night. Fatigue can be brought on by different causes like a decrease in physical activity or allergies or diabetes, but today we're specifically going to focus on how fatigue can be brought on, but also resolved by our food and beverage choices. So myself and one of our dietitian team members, Sophia, we geeked out and we read a whole bunch of research papers on the link between nutrition and fatigue. And we've simplified what is known in the science and that's what we're gonna share with you in today's video. We also created an uncomplicated article that's just gonna help to support this video even more. So if you wanna delve deeper, I'm gonna link that for you below. But for now, let's dive right in. Our bodies have an internal clock that impacts when we sleep and wake up, and this is called our circadian rhythm. Our circadian rhythm is very strongly linked to dark and light cycles. So when it's more light outside, we tend to feel more awake, and when it's dark, we tend to feel more tired. Now there's an emerging field of science called chrononutrition, which studies how our eating behaviors can also influence the circadian rhythm. Like some recent studies, for example, have shown that eating irregularly can throw our circadian rhythm out of sync, which can reduce the quality and duration of our sleep. So ensuring that we eat at more or less the same times each day can actually help to synchronize our sleep-wake cycle, making us feel less tired. Breakfast isn't for everyone, I get that, um, but if you are somebody who kind of feels chronically fatigued throughout the day and you're also skipping breakfast, this could be the culprit. So after we've had like a good night's rest, we've been fasting for many hours because we've been asleep. And so when we wake up, we're a bit depleted in energy. And so breaking the fast, which is where the word breakfast actually comes from, this helps to kickstart our day with some fuel. There's been several studies that have shown that those who eat breakfast, especially high fiber breakfasts, are not only more alert throughout the day, but they also have improved memory, a more positive mood, and even better bowel movements. There was also this one interesting study of 498 students that found that those who were skipping breakfast were also the ones reporting that they weren't sleeping as well at night. So not only does eating breakfast kind of give us more energy throughout the day, it could potentially also help us sleep better. So it's a win-win. This is what I love about nutrition. It turns out that we can very strategically compose our meals to help us feel more alert during the day and to help us kind of fall asleep and better stay asleep at night. So let's explore why that's the case, starting with protein. So protein is made up of these building blocks that are called amino acids, one of which is tryptophan. Tryptophan gets taken to our brain where it's absorbed and that gets converted to serotonin, which helps us feel good and calm that gets converted to melatonin, which is a hormone that actually helps our body kind of get ready for sleep. The research showed that people who sleep well tended to consume more protein over the day than people who sleep poorly. Notable plant-based food sources of tryptophan are soy, nuts and seeds, including cashew, pumpkin, and sunflower seeds, beans, leafy greens, mushrooms, and broccoli. So it's important that we get enough protein so that we get the tryptophan, but it's worth noting that you don't wanna to get too much protein because that's been linked with decreasing sleep quality. So no need to go out and take any protein powders as long as you're following a foods first approach. Now let's delve into the carbs. I have for simplicity's sake broken this up into two different groups, uh, one of which we're gonna call slow digesting carbs and one quick digesting carbs. Quick digesting carbs are those like white bread, white pasta, and white rice. Slow digesting carbs, on the other hand, are those that are higher in fiber. So think whole grains, legumes, and vegetables. What's interesting is that fruits have a bit of a mix of both. Okay, so why is knowing all of this important? In short, eating quick digesting carbs increases the amount of tryptophan that gets absorbed into our brain, which is then gonna increase the chance that we're gonna feel sleepy after eating. And this is what's so cool. We can use this knowledge to our benefit. Like in the evening, we can increase the chances of becoming sleepy a few hours after dinner by having quick carbs with our dinner meal, or by having a piece of fruit with dinner or as an evening snack, just to help to increase the absorption of tryptophan into our brain. On the other hand, if we want to avoid avoid the after lunch slump that we can experience sometimes, we can try to have slow digesting carbs with our meal instead of quick digesting carbs. In addition to them just being great sources of fiber, these slow digesting carbs give us a more steady and continued release of energy throughout the day. 
Being deficient in certain nutrients can really affect sleep. This is something we found across a whole bunch of different research papers, where if certain people are deficient, for example, in iron, magnesium, potassium, zinc, selenium, beta carotene, B vitamins, and vitamin C, E, and or D, they tend to sleep more poorly. Now, these vitamins and minerals, they take part in a whole bunch of the different complex reactions that occur in our body. Um, so like iron, for example, helps with the production of serotonin, whereas B vitamins help to create melatonin. But there's there's no need to go out and supplement with these vitamins and minerals unless your doctor has specifically advised that you do, um, but that's namely because our philosophy is to follow a food first approach. It is definitely possible and recommended to get kind of the nutrients that we need just by eating a variety of different plant foods. So we're going to take a brief intermission to share two different evening snacks that you can enjoy that can actually help to promote sleep and it's a great opportunity for us to put into practice what we've learned, starting off with just simple banana and nut butter. Both bananas and almond butter contain tryptophan, and when you combine that with the quick digesting carbs that are in the banana, the tryptophan absorption in our brains is increased. What's more is that these are both high in magnesium, and bananas are high in potassium, which are a couple of the minerals that we just previously talked about. Here's another option. In place of having an evening tea that might have some caffeine in it, you could try out some warm soy milk instead. This contains tryptophan, but also magnesium and calcium. And if you'd prefer that the milk is flavored, you could try out our homemade golden latte mix. It's really delicious, and it makes for a comforting drink that also helps to promote sleep. So we all know that caffeine, which is found in coffee most predominantly, but also in energy drinks and in tea, that this helps to make us feel more alert, right? And this is because it's a stimulant that temporarily suppresses the buildup of sleep pressure, which is a mechanism that makes us tired. Now, everyone is different, but in most adults, it takes the body about three to seven hours to break down half of the caffeine that's in our system. This is known as its half-life. So let's say that we drink our first cup of coffee at 9 a.m. Five hours later at 2 p.m., there's still gonna be half of that caffeine in our system. And then another five hours later at 7 p.m., a quarter of what we drank at 9 a.m. is still gonna be in our system. And then by the time it's midnight, we're gonna have an eighth of that caffeine still in our system. It's pretty interesting, right? Now that you understand this, it might make sense then when you hear that like caffeine could just have such a lasting uh, effect, even though it's something that we might have consumed many, many hours before bed. So maybe what just is helpful to keep in mind is caffeine's half-life and to try to have our caffeine early in the morning or early in the afternoon and try to limit it later on in the evening if we want to have a better night's rest. Water makes up about 55 to 75 percent of our body weight and it's involved in so many different reactions in the human body, but a lot of adults just don't drink enough. And even mild dehydration, according to the research, can cause things like fatigue and daytime sleepiness, mood changes, and a drop in cognitive performance. So if you find that you're tired a lot during the day, it might help to just check in and see if you think you've been drinking enough. Some telltale signs are your skin or lips might be dry or your pee could be a bit dark in color. And if it is, it's just a reminder to drink a little bit more. I myself am terrible at remembering to drink enough water, so it helps to just kind of have a cup by your desk as a reminder to drink sometimes, or you could make it more fun by trying to flavor your water with a little bit of fruit or cucumber or mint, for example. But overall, what we saw in so many different studies was this kind of recurring message on the importance of eating whole plant-based foods and a variety of them as often as possible, not only to support overall health, but also to help us feel more energized throughout the day and to help better support our sleep. On. How we're going to start is obviously without the blazer. So place it nicely on the chair, take your heels off or your shoes off and just place them neatly over to one side just in case someone opens the meeting room door and you don't want to be like kind of all your head over to the side. Feel this nice opening through the side of the neck and into the shoulder. You're going to take a deep breath in here. And as you exhale, just gently let the head fall over to the side, right? We're holding onto the chair to create a little bit of resistance, a little bit of pull, right? So that we feel that full stretch. We're gonna go to the other side in a sec. I wanna take one more deep breath in and a full breath out. Okay, bring it back up to center, other side. Left hand grabs hold of the side of the chair, keeping the chest lifted so we get that nice elongation of the spine. Drop the ear over to the right side and gently start to pull into this. So from the front, that looks a little bit like this. We're pulling to the side and dropping the head over. Yeah. So we're coming over. So that right hand is gonna grab hold of the chair. Left hand grabs hold as well. Twisting around. Ooh, I'm a little bit more stiff on this side. 
So inhale and exhale, twist. Hey guys, it's Joanna here. So are you new to the gym? Do you feel absolutely lost when it comes to using the gym equipment? Or perhaps you're just too shy to ask a trainer? Well, watch this video through. I'm going to show you how to use some of the basic gym equipment and also each muscle group you'll be working on. So let's get into the gym and let's start working out. Here are a few quick tips. All machines have diagrams stating the major and minor muscles being worked on. The first thing to look out for is the adjustment levers, which usually are bright colored so that they stand out. How heavy should you lift? The weights should be heavy enough to fatigue your muscles within 8 to 15 repetitions, but not too heavy that you struggle to complete a full range of motion. Beginners, if you're new to the movements, you can always start slightly lighter and slowly increase the weight as you get more comfortable with the machines. So let's begin. This is the seated row machine, which basically works on your back muscles. So the first adjustment point is the seat. Move the seat up or down so that the support pad is directly in front of your chest. Grip the handles with your palms facing each other. Keep your back flat, chest open and feet flat. As you exhale, pull the handles and focus on squeezing your shoulder blades together. Keep your elbows bent and pointed back. Hold for two seconds. Inhale and slowly release to the starting position. Avoid spreading your elbows to the side. Don't let your chest or torso lift away from the pad in front of you. Your chest should always be in contact with the pad and the only movement should be from your arms. Let's move on to seated chest press. The major muscle worked on is your chest muscle and the secondary muscles are your shoulders and triceps. Adjust the seat height up or down so that the handles are in line with the chest level, not above or below it. Sit with your back fully against the chair. Chest up and keep your abs tight. Hold the handles with your palms facing down and elbows bent at a 90 degree angle. Use the foot pedal to help you lift the weight stack. Once it's lifted, place your feet flat on the floor. As you exhale, extend your arms and push the handles forward. Do not lock your elbows, always keep them slightly bent. Squeeze your chest muscles and hold for two counts. Inhale and slowly release your arms to chest level in a 90 degree angle and repeat. Instead of using your shoulders, keep your shoulders relaxed and focus on engaging your chest muscles. This is the leg extension machine which works primarily on your quads. There are three main adjustment points. So let's start by adjusting the seat. Adjust the seat forward or back until your back is fully supported. There shouldn't be any gap when you're seated. Next, adjust the foot pad so that it's rested on the lowest part of the shin, just above your feet. Then bring the leg support all the way back until your legs are in a 90 degree angle. Hold on to the handles on the side of the machine. This is your starting position. As you exhale, extend your legs upwards until your knees are straight, but not locked. Engage your quad muscles. Hold and squeeze for one count. Inhale and slowly lower the weights back down to starting position, ensuring that the stacked weights do not slam, but they should come close to touching. And repeat. The seated leg curl machine works the opposite muscle, which is the hamstrings. This machine also has three main adjustment points. Again, start by adjusting the seat forward or back until your back is fully supported with no gap. Sit and place the back of your lower legs on the padded foot rest. You want to adjust so that it's rested securely on your ankles. Then lift the lap pad up so that your legs are fully extended in front of you with your feet facing forward. Hold the handles by your side and keep both feet shoulder width apart. As you exhale, slowly bend at the knees to curl the heels down towards the back of your thighs. Engage your hamstrings, hold the contractor position for a second. Inhale and slowly release to the starting position. 
This is the shoulder press machine, which works primarily on your shoulders, and the secondary muscles worked on are your triceps. Adjust the seat height up or down so that the handles are in line with your shoulder level. Again, always check that you're seated with your back fully against the chair, chest up, and keeping your abs tight. Hold the handles with your palms facing forward and elbows bent at a 90 degree angle. As you exhale, extend your arms straight up until they are fully extended, but do not lock your elbows. Hold the contractor position for two counts and slowly release to starting position. And repeat. The Pack Fly machine is another machine which works on your major chest muscles. The minor muscles worked on are your shoulders, biceps and also triceps. First, adjust the seat height so that your back is firmly rested against the pad and the handles are at chest height. Next, adjust the handles so that they are directly by your sides. Hold onto the handles with your palms facing forward and extend your arms straight out to the sides, keeping your elbows slightly bent. As you exhale, bring the handles together directly in front of you, making sure that both arms are still extended and elbows slightly bent. Squeeze the chest muscles and hold for two counts. Inhale and slowly return to the starting position. And repeat, you should feel a mild stretch in your chest and shoulders. This machine also doubles up to work on your rear delts or the back shoulder muscles. The minor muscles targeted are the lats, mid-back, and also your triceps. Adjust the handles and bring them close together. Reverse your sitting position with the support pad directly in front of your chest. Grip the handles with your palms facing each other at shoulder height. As you exhale, spread your arms to the side and backwards and focus on squeezing the back of your shoulders together. Keep your elbows straight but not locked. Hold and squeeze for two counts. Then inhale and slowly release to the starting position. Again, don't let your chest lift away from the pad in front of you. Your chest should always be in contact with the pad and the only movement should be from your arms. With your hand. I love that. A nice little kiss. That was a really beautiful way of putting it. Thank you. Here, we're going to take <laughs> one more. Good. We're going to wrap that bottom arm around the waist. Come to about halfway and we're going to pulse it up and up. And just little pulses, almost like we're crushing that hand with our waist. Good. We're breathing and smiling. We just have a few more. Good. Almost there. Couple more. Five seconds. This is three, two, and bring that bottom hand to the floor. We're gonna reach that arm up over the head. We're gonna bring the hand to the foot together and down and together and down. Now, if you're like me and you've got some hips on you and you wanna take that knee bent and out, go for it. Again, it's still gonna feel special. You're still targeting all the same muscles. It's whatever feels delicious in your body. We have five more seconds, five. This is three, two, one, and let's flip it over into that elbow plank just to take a little plank break. On those elbows, press it up into that plank. We're gonna send one hip down to the floor, up through center, other hip down, and center. Good, drop and lift, and drop and lift. Stay with it, y'all. Now, we don't have to physically touch the floor, but send it to the floor. So we get a nice, delicious twist, a nice, delicious rotation. If you wanna take it on the knees, like Zach is doing so beautifully, then go for it, whatever feels good to you. Couple more, down and up, one more, down and up, and come onto those knees, let's even you out and do the other side. So we got one leg long, arms out to a T, we're kissing the floor. I'm using Zach's terminology, because <laughs> I liked it so much. It was so positive. Down and up, kissing the floor with those fingertips, really reaching with those toes, so we're always thinking of ways that we can get longer and stronger, right? Good, few more here. Kiss and up, good. Couple more, who's breathing, Zach? I'm breathing. Breathe and check, here we go. This is three, two, pause here. Wrap that arm around the waist, send it over and little pulses up and up 
Now the question is, am I breathing? Yeah. I've been talking so much. <laughs> Let me stop and breathe. <sighs> All right, I did it. Good. <laughs> Keep going. Few more. Good. This is five, three, two, and bring that hand to the floor. Reach that arm up over the head and bring it in either long leg or bent knee, finishing out this series. Either way, you're pulling that foot or knee to that hand. Enjoy that nice lateral flexion. Get into those obliques, get into the side of those abdominals. We are almost there, y'all. And then we're pretty much at the end of this workout. Woo! This is five, three, two, one, and relax. Beautiful, well don't relax, but let's come onto the hands and knees and go into a downward dog. Or a brief moment of relaxation. So, tucking those toes under, press it up into that downward dog. We're gonna lengthen the right leg up towards the ceiling. Bend that knee into the chest. We're gonna pull it straight through the elbows and kick it up to the ceiling as we press back. Again, forward and back. Two more, forward and back. Last one, forward and back. Lower that foot to the floor. Other leg floats right up. We bring it in, pull and push. So my hands and legs aren't moving, but there's a moment when I'm pulling and a moment when I'm pushing. Figure out when that's happening, go further. One more, good. Lower that foot to the floor. Walk your hands back towards your feet. Release that head. Hang out here. If you want to hold on to opposite elbows, you can. Tuck that chin. Good, release those arms, soften the knees. Slowly roll it up to stand. Go ahead and take one arm, pull it across the body. Give it a little pull. A little love. A little love. It's never hurt nobody, you know? Absolutely not, especially when it's to yourself. Come on now. Good, switch sides. Other arm across, give it a pull. You made it, y'all. Good, let's bring one arm over the head, pull onto that elbow, stretching out that tricep. Good, and switch sides, up and over. Give it a little pull. Good, let's interlace both hands over the head. We're gonna reach up and over to the side. Little lateral stretch, sending one hip in one direction, those arms in the other direction. Bring it up through center, other way. Good, bring it center, relax those arms down and you are all done. Amazing work. As you continue coming back to this workout, figure out ways you can go a little bit further, challenge yourself a little bit more, a little bit more, celebrate your growth every single time. Amazing work, you guys. Thank you, Zach. See you later, thank See you. See you next time. Hi, I'm Jeff Halaby. Teenagers' fitness needs are different than adults. They're still growing, they have endless energy, and many of them are fearless. So with safety in mind, we're doing a teenage tone-up today on Workout From Within. We're putting the fun back in fitness, not to your chest, but more to your hip area. There you go. That's it, let's go, come on. You gotta live it. Welcome back. We're tackling a popular topic, teen workouts. Whether your teen wants to get sports conditioning, lose weight, or just feel better about themselves, fitness can be both fun and beneficial. And I just so happen to have a healthy and willing teen with me, Leah. Welcome, Leah. Thank you for having me. And I should tell you, I'm partial to the name Leah because that's my niece's name. That's great. So you're ready, you're, you're in my inner circle. Now you're quite active from what I understand I already. I am. I used to do Pilates. Uh huh. And now I'm really interested in kickboxing. Very cool. I needed some more cardio. Good. Kickboxing is actually great too because aside from the cardiovascular benefits, mm -hmm. you also learn how to kick butt. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's true, but it's a total body workout. Yes. I'm obviously a big fan, having done it for many years myself. Mm -hmm. So when you're, a, when you're a teen athlete and mm -hmm. anybody who does athletic things, I consider to be an athlete. Right, so you're right. an athlete in my eyes. It's really important that you safeguard your body. Right. Okay. And teen female 
athletes are more prone to ACL tears. Have you heard about this before? I haven't. The ACL is a tendon, oh, I'm sorry, a ligament, <laughs> stands for anterior cruciate ligament mm -hmm. in, in your knee that can sometimes tear in athletics. And because of the hip angle that women have, men are very square, mm. their legs. Women have a slight inward tilt of this upper thigh bone. Right. They, have a more, they have an increased chance of actually tearing that, uh, that ligament, okay? Mm -hmm. We're gonna do a few exercises that will help safeguard you mm -hmm. against tearing it, all right? Okay. Now, the knee is a dumb joint, okay. and that's not because it can't do calculus, it's because it's stuck between your ankle and your hip. Okay. So in order to make the knee more intelligent, you really need to make it supporting partners better. So we're really gonna focus on the hip right now, and I'm gonna give you two exercises that are going to be bookends with each other. The first exercise is called a Bulgarian split squat. Okay. okay. To perform this exercise, you're gonna put one foot back, and you can do this with just your body weight, mm. all right? One foot back, you're gonna dip all the way down, just like this, so you mm -hmm. almost, almost feel a stretch here, right. and then come back up. Your strength is coming from your front leg, not from the back leg, okay? okay. So let's go ahead and set you up. You can uh, put your right foot forward as well, just like I had mine, mm -hmm. and your left leg behind you, and that just gets anchored gently. Uh huh. Why don't you hop forward just a bit with that right foot? A little more, okay? And I'd say just a tad more, and I'll give you a hand if you okay. want okay, to be, feel steady. Now what you're gonna do is relax that back leg and mm -hmm. just let the knee bend and drop down. There you go, excellent. Do you get a stretch at all at the bottom? I definitely do, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great because you can use this as both a stretch and a strengthening exercise. Why don't you go ahead and pop up? There you go, let's do another, hey, 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 one rep. Oh boy. What kind of workout <laughs> is that, a one rep workout? Let's okay. go, put the leg back up. All right, drop back down. Good, and come up. Let's do two more reps just like that, just to make sure you got it. Big stretch, that's it, and one more. Very good. Now, obviously, go. when you do this on your own, you would do uh, you do both sides, okay? Right. You wouldn't just do one side, but mm -hmm. that's the entire idea right there. I and felt it. <laughs> you'll definitely feel it. You will, especially when you first do a few sets of like 10 to 15, you'll definitely feel it here and in your butt. This yeah. really like hits those areas pretty pretty hard. Yeah. Um, all areas that I should say everybody wants to strengthen as much as they can, especially if they're in athletics. Definitely. The next move we're gonna do is going to work the same muscles, mm -hmm. only you're just gonna simply be stepping up onto a chair. And it's called a step up. It's gonna look like this. One foot's gonna come up just like this. Mm -hmm. All right, why don't you come on over so you can get a good look right there, okay? You're just gonna step up and back down. That's all there is to it. You're gonna step up, lock out, and back down, all okay. right? So why don't you go ahead, I just kind of kept myself at an angle so you could see me a little better. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and step in Okay. Okay. Either leg that you prefer, you're just going to face straight against the wall. I was on an angle just so you could see me, so oh, you can go straight it. ahead. There you go. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and step up, lock it out. So come up for a moment. Okay. Lock out and back down. Good. You can move your heel back just a little bit. And the nice part about this, especially doing it on a surface that's a little cushy, is that you're, you feel your foot having to work to stabilize yeah. you. So it's really good because a lot of the muscles of the lower leg are gonna get involved as well. And remember I told you that the knee is a dumb joint because it's stuck between the hip and the ankle. Right. You're getting to strengthen both at the same time if you do it off a cushy surface, okay? okay. So let's go ahead, step up, lock out, and back down. Good, one more time, up, lock out, and back down. Don't rush it, one more time, <laughs> up, lock out, and then back down, excellent. As you build up, your strength in that, you can actually get to the point where you hold dumbbells and you do it with some added weight. Okay. Now, um, the, the, other, um, the other point of discussion that we, uh, we spoke about is that you bragged about being able to do push-ups, right? I did. <laughs> and I called you out because I said that your push-up didn't count because it I wasn't did. off the floor, all right? Mm -hmm. So there's no reason why you can't do a full range push-up. Now, mm -hmm. I was impressed that you could do any push-ups at all because most men, quite frankly, can't even do push-ups. So I was very impressed with that. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do is help you get to the point where you can do full push-ups from okay. the floor up. In order to do that, we're gonna use the assistance of a band, all right? Okay. Now, this band is gonna go around you mm -hmm. and underneath the armpits, mm -hmm. just over the chest like that. Now. Once we get down, now, by the way, I'm gonna be holding the band for you at the okay. top in order to help you up. This is something you could easily anchor to a doorway or a chin-up bar or anything like that that's above you, even scaffolding, if you have scaffolding <laughs> that you wanna hook it up to. So go ahead and get down in push-up position. Okay. All right, now obviously the, the band is going to be pulling you back up, mm -hmm. okay? So let's go ahead and descend all the way down and come back up. There you go. Now you're able to go all the way to the ground, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, all the way down. 
and back up. That's it, and one more. All the way down and back up. Good, and you can come back up to standing and we'll let this just drop to the ground and step out carefully, okay? So that's how you can start progressing your ability to, to do push-ups as well, all right? By using a band like this, you can get this almost anywhere online, mm -hmm. and um, you'll eventually work up to the point where you can maybe get 20 reps like that, and I'd say get rid of the band then and start trying yourself. to do with your own weight, all right? Now, something else I heard is that you like to fight. I so do, I want I want to see what you got. Okay. So I'm going to give you some 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 air mitts. I'm going to give you my hands to hit, okay. all right? Okay. And I'd like to see some of your kickboxing Absolutely. skills, all right? So what I'd like to see is a 1 2 and a right roundhouse to the ribs. We're not okay. using any pads, okay? So let's okay. see what, let's see where your hands up. Okay. Get in a good fighting position. Let's see a 1 okay. 2. 1 2 and a kick to the ribs. Not bad. <laughs> let's see another 1 2 and a kick to the ribs. Not bad at all. Let's start with the left hand now. 1 2 and a kick to the ribs, good. Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. and Caroline and we'll start uh, simply by crawling forward to the hands and knees crawl forward to the hands and knees now the yoga practice has to be a little more gentle and tuned in to the breath calm vibe uh, to calm the nervous system so hands under the shoulders knees under the hips exhale the air from your lungs look forward and as you inhale tilt your pelvis to the earth and lift the chest and lift the head Warming up the spine now. Exhale, round the spine and let the head relax. Good. Inhale, tilt the pelvis, lift the chest, lift the head. And exhale, round the spine, relax the head. Keep going like this, yogis at home. And remember, intimacy with the breath. So we're peeling back some of the accumulated stress in the body. And this is what we want to do as we prepare uh, for housing life in the body. We want to get pure and very simple with our intake and very uh, strong in the body without a lot of impact. Take a few more rounds now. And on the next time you look up, tuck the toes and press back to a downward dog. Lift the hips and thighs high in the air. Now press the hands down, root the knuckles, and relax your head so you can look towards the navel or the thighs. So we want to minimize any jumping. We're looking more for stability and strength as well. Not so much hopping and jumping. We don't want to overstimulate the nervous system. Now ripple forward to a plank pose as you inhale and exhale lower the knees, the chest and the chin. Very good. Inhale, slide forward to cobra and exhale, tuck toes, seat to heels, downward dog. So we're just getting some synovial fluid released at the major joints of the body. Again, ripple forward to a plank pose, look up. Exhale, knees, keep the hips lifted, chest and stretch the chin forward. Inhale to cobra pose. Exhale, tuck the toes, seat to the heels and downward dog. Beautiful, inhale, lift your right leg in the air and exhale, step the right foot next to the right hand, lower the left knee, point the left foot and inhale, lift the torso. You can interlace your hands, fingers and place the hands on your thigh. If you're a little more open here, you can lift your arms and arch back. So we'd like to open the area around the hips and in most yoga practices, we're pulling energy up. We want to be uh, focused on an upward flow, which is a downward flow of movement into the legs and to the limbs. So breathe in now. Feel the hip opening up and feel the body warming. Very deep, smooth inhales and exhales. Now come forward on your inhale. And exhale, place your fingers on the earth and let's sit back very carefully now. Sit back so that the left foot is outside of the left hip. 
Now, many of you will need a prop under the right sit bone. So a block or a blanket will be useful. And the key is to listen to the breath, to find that right amount of effort. Uh, this is not like the other things we've approached in life. It's really tuning in very intimately to our own bodies, to understanding ourselves, and to really getting clean and simple. Okay, deep breath in and a deep breath out. Beautiful job. Inhale, lift up and exhale, arrive onto the right foot and let's in a gentle way, press back to downward dog and breathe into the back of the left knee. Ripple to a plank pose, inhale, exhale, knees, chest and chin. Beautiful work, inhale, slide forward, cobra. Exhale, tuck toes, seat go to the heels, and then lift to downward dog. Lift the left leg in the air, inhale. Exhale, left foot next to left hand, lower the right knee now. Lift the torso, you point the right toes, interlace your hands, place them on the thigh, or reach up, lift out of the waist and arch back. So yogis at home, uh, we are tilling the soil. We are sort of rooting out what is not needed. Any accumulated trapped energy now, breathe into the area of the hips and feel that starting to open. And notice if you're starting to tune into the breath, the subtle flow of energy. So take another breath and come forward. And then what we'll do is uh, lay back, and as you sit down, you might need the prop now under the left sit bone, and you can see the right foot is outside of the right hip. Lift and lengthen the torso, and very slowly, you have to listen now to how far to go. Keep the left leg strong, and fold forward here, breathing in and releasing any tension in the right thigh. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, beautiful, exhale. Now lift up, inhale and walk forward, anchor the left foot and in a very gentle and slow way, press back to downward facing dog and let the head relax. Breathe in. And breathe out, bend the knees and walk your feet forward behind the hands. We'll keep the feet hip distance apart here. Then inhale, look, create a link between the breath and movement, and then transition to the standing poses, which are really great for building strength without having ballistic jumping motions. So this is a safe way to build strength and make the body a vehicle for holding life. So just connect to your breath now. Exhale everything from the lungs. Beautiful, Surya Namaskar, inhale, lift the arms, look up. So we're just preparing the body, exhale, fold forward. It's a purification process. Inhale, look up, step the right leg back to a lunge. As you exhale, flow to downward dog. Wonderful, glide forward to plank pose. Exhale, the knees, the chest, and the chin. Inhale, cobra pose, move forward. Exhale, tuck the toes, press the seat to the heels and lift up to downward dog. On your in-breath, step the right foot forward and look up. Beautiful, exhale, left foot meets the right, fold over straight legs. Then inhale, lift your arms all the way overhead, look at the thumbs. Wonderful, as you exhale, fold all the way back down, touch the earth. Inhale, look up, step the left leg back. Exhale, right foot back, downward dog. Ripple to plank pose, inhale, and very gently now, knees, chest, and chin, exhale. Cobra pose, inhale, and downward dog, press back, exhale. Inhale, left foot forward, exhale, right foot meets left, fold over the legs, and inhale, lift the arms overhead, and exhale, relax the arms to the side, stand up straight. So the yoga practice uh, is a very wonderful place to feel that sense of community and to have like minds. So move into the standing sequence now. This is Vrikshasana, the tree pose. Start by bending, 
the right knee into the chest on an inhale. An exhale, I'll give you two choices. Turn the knee to the side, place your foot on the calf, and if you're a little more open at the hip, bring your foot to the left thigh. On an inhale, make the hands into a prayer, and look at one point as you exhale. Now, if you wanna move a little further and challenge your sense of balance and really strengthen the nervous system here, you can lift the arms overhead And if you're sturdy and safe there, perhaps release the right arm down and bend sideways. Now stay with the breath, breathing in and breathing out. Give the practice. Feel like you are renewing and restoring your energy here. So like a tree, root down and become steady with the breath. Good. Inhale, lift the arms overhead, look forward. Exhale, bring the prayer hands to your heart. Beautiful flow. Inhale, right knee forward, and exhale, stand up. And let's switch to the other side. Bend the left knee into the chest, yogis at home. And exhale, turn the knee to the side. Again, place the foot. If you're new to the practice, go to the calf. If you're more flexible in the hip, bring it up to the right thigh. The hands come to a prayer. If you're good there, the arms go overhead. If you're comfortable there, perhaps challenge the nervous system, release the left arm down, bend sideways, and it's very useful to look at one point to help focus the balance and breathe in. Try to root through the right foot, engage the right thigh, and breathe out, stretch through the side body. Another inhale and an exhale. Lift the prayer overhead, inhale. Exhale the prayer to your heart. Inhale the knee forward and exhale, stand up. Good. So draw the right knee into the chest now. Draw the right knee into the chest. So strengthening the body uh, for holding life. Soften the left knee, hinge forward. Your right foot points to the sky and then extend the right leg and extend the arms. And now breathe deeply. Focusing again on one point. Take another breath in, and as you breathe out, release your hands to the earth. Feel free to bring the blocks there to help you. Now press through the ball of the right foot, square your hips, and inhale. See if you can lift your left arm up, open the chest, and gaze in the direction of the left thumb. Take a big breath in. And a big breath out, release your left hand to the earth. Then inhale, look up. And exhale, walk your fingers back in line with the toes and fold forward for a standing split. Good, breathing in and breathing out. Good, relax the head, breathe in and breathing out. So the standing poses create a lot of stability at the hip joints as well. Look up, inhale, square the right hip to the left, and exhale, right foot meets left, fold forward over the legs. Sit for Ukatasana, inhale, bend the knees and sit deeply, reach your arms up, and exhale, stand up for Tadasana. Draw the left knee into the chest, Hinge at the hips, tilt forward, lengthen the torso, and then take the arms back and extend the leg. Press through the ball of the left foot. Good. Breathing in and breathing out. One more breath in. And as you breathe out, release your hands to the earth. Feel free to use the props. Inhale, lift the right arm up, open the chest. And exhale, perhaps gaze towards the thumb. Keep the left hip squared to the right. Breathe in. So building strength, breathe out. Inhale, exhale, right hand down. Then inhale, look up. Exhale, fingers in line with toes, fold forward for standing split. Breathing in and breathing out. Inhale. Exhale, good, look up, square your hips, release the left foot next to the right, and fold over straight legs. Fold forward, straighten the legs, okay? Fold forward, straighten your legs, and forward fold, that's it, good. 
Now sit deeply in Ukatasana and stay here now. Press into the feet, press into the knees, absorb the lower ribs and the body. It's a great area to channel our personal creativity because it's the seat of the second chakra, the Swadhisthana chakra. So let's crawl forward to the hands and knees and then we'll press back to a downward facing dog and then go ahead and lift your left leg high in the air behind you. Let the head relax and spread the toes out of the left foot. Now come to a plank pose as you inhale and lay the left ankle behind the right wrist as you exhale. You can point the right foot here. Now the right hip wants to fall to the left. Square it forward and then fold forward. Relax your head towards the earth. Now work the side edge of your left foot into the earth. And again, remember to square the hips forward and stay with a very deep, even ujjayi breathing. Wonderful, start to walk the hands up, yogis at home. Walk the hands up, lengthen through the side body. And then on an exhale, swing your right leg all the way around, swing it all the way forward and bring that right foot to the outside of the left knee. Take the right arm behind you, lift the left arm up and take a twist to the right side. Now root the right sit bone down and start to stretch your gaze to the right. So we're cultivating an ease by means of breathing. We're starting to wring the body out of anxiety. So come forward on the inhale and twist a breath to the left as you exhale. Good, come back to center and stack the shins for ankle to knee. The right ankle will be to the outside of the left knee. Now you wanna flex the feet and if you're new to the practice, you may need a block or a blanket under the right knee. Flex both feet, lengthen through the waist, and then fold forward, maintaining an intimate connection with the breath. So we're sort of just tuning up the instrument, sort of like when we tune uh, a musical instrument. We're just preparing the body and looking at it in a really detailed way and making it as healthy as possible. Breathe in and breathe out. So the yoga practice has a powerful purifying effect uh, more deeper into the body down to the level of the organs. Lift up now, lift up. And you may have to use your hands to help you adjust yourself for Gomokasana, the cow face pose, with the right knee on top of the left. So lift yourself up, right knee on top of left. Make your feet equidistant from one another. Work the side edges of the feet into the earth. Lower the seat bones and you can hold your toes here. Lengthen through the waist and fold forward on an exhale. Now keep the seat bones rooted. Breathing in and breathing out. Inhale, exhale. One more deep breath in and a deep breath out. Wonderful work. Lift up, lift the torso, lift the knees, and then place both feet on the earth. Sure, Shasana B on the other side. Bend the left knee into the chest. Take the knee to the side. Now the hands help you. You can lift up, place the pelvic floor right on the heel. And again, the prop is useful. Bring the prop to the center, right in front of the navel. And a light twist, nothing aggressive, a light twist. Crease at the hips and fold forward. So backing off from aggressive twisting, backing off from jumping, removing that ballistic quality in the practice and a more restorative, more tranquil vibe. So a steady, even breath and breathe out. Okay, lift up, lift up. Move your prop to the side and free the leg, free the leg. 
And now let's open the legs wide apart, wide apart. This is Upa Vista Konasana. It's a beautiful straddle. Again, it can take on that restorative quality. If you want to bring the bolster to the center, that can be useful. Hold uh, the shins and lengthen through the waist. And let's fold forward. Hold your feet, your toes, or again, some props right through the center and forward fold, connecting to the energy now of turning yourself over to your practice. Weeding the garden, weeding the garden, sort of a refinement of ourselves. Keep the legs strong, keep the shoulders relaxed, breathe in and breathe out. Good. Lift up now, lift up, and then draw the inside of the knees, draw the knees together, and then let's swing the legs to the side, and then come to the knees, and we'll point the feet, and then lift up to the knees, lift up to the knees. Now take your hands next to the sacrum, point your fingers to the earth, and open the chest, press the hips forward, and then reach back, keep pressing the hips forward, hold your feet or your heels and open the chest and let the head go back last, head back last. Breathing in and breathing out. Inhale, exhale. One more, breathe in and breathe out. Now we'll come to Virasana, inhale, rise. Good, and bring your knees together, yogis at home, knees together. Point all ten toes straight back. Your feet are wider than the hips. And sit back, and if your sit bones don't reach the earth, use a prop, like a blanket or a block, to bring the earth up to you. Point all the toes straight back. Press into the feet. Now again, connect to the pelvic floor, pull the pelvic floor up, feel the side of the body become long, keep that practice, and bring the dominant hand in your non-dominant hand, so perhaps the right hand in the left hand, and close the eyes, close the eyes, and this is a powerful breathing practice right here. Stay with the breath, a lot of anxiety reduction, Ka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. Yogis, you're watching Yoga Sutra now. I'm Jai Sugram. On today's practice, we focus on yoga for happiness. Now, as we take the asanas and we channel that light and joyful mood, let's consider two things. One is that yoga is a practice, so there's these physical things we do, actual techniques, but also it is a goal. And we'll get to that goal in a moment. Uh, joining me for practice is Savana and Roque. And then press the prayer hands together. Let the chest open. And take a deep breath in. And deep breath out. Good. Inhale halfway. And from this position, Kapalabhati Kriya. Start snapping the lower abdomen, forcefully exhaling, blasting the air out rhythmically. Don't worry about breathing in. Keep going. Keep exhaling everything out. Feel heat, yogis at home, through the center of the body, up to the space in between the eyebrows. Keep exhaling. And now start to slow it down. Breathe everything out and fold forward over the legs. Straighten the legs. Heel toe the feet, hip distance apart. 
and inhale, look up and fold on the exhale. Take a few deep, intimate breaths here with the legs nice and strong. And then soften your knees and inhale, rise all the way up. And exhale, bring the feet together and stand up straight. Surya Namaskar now for some heat. Inhale, lift the arms, look up. And as you exhale, fold all the way forward. Touch the earth. Then inhale, look forward. Option to step or jump back. Let's go to Chaturanga. Then inhale, lift to upward dog. As you exhale, roll over the toes. Downward facing dog. Breathe in and breathe out. So we're following uh, the techniques of yoga to broach the inner world. The masters of yoga tell us that happiness is not on the outer world. We are closing off the senses, closing off the sense of sight. We're going inside and trying to identify with that part of ourselves that will never change. And this is where the real gem, the real gift of yoga lies. Stay with the breath here and feel your body interacting with the environment through the hands and through the feet. And feel a sense of ease now with the breath. Good, and then exhaling, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, step or jump forward. Bring your feet together and look up. And exhale, fold over the legs. Sit for Ukatasana, inhale, bend. Welcome back, yogis. Today's practice is all about yoga for happiness. Now we've established that yoga, that sense of joy and union is our natural state. Let's remember now that science is showing us that our minds communicate very intimately with each and every cell of the body. We'll move into a forward bending sequence now. So come to a very nice seated position with the legs stretched long. So the mind is communicating, stretch the legs forward with every cell of the body. And the yogi is mindful by means of breathing to where the blocks and the resistance to freedom is. So in the asana, we want to, uh, instead of gripping and pulling and fighting, we want to channel that energy of liberation. And we experience this by breathing. So place a blanket under your seat if you're new to this posture, holding into ourselves, which is a very beautiful, very humble act. Keep your chest open and then hinge from the hips with the chest open, hinge forward, and you can hold your toes, your shins, or if you're new yogis at home, belt the balls of the feet and just fold forward into the body. Now this is great for the organs of digestion as well. But keep your attention on the breath. If we're looking to be happy, we want to really unlock what's called these karmas inside our body. So there are past actions transcribed in the body and where we're tight is where we need to bring our attention. So feel in the body now where the resistance is and bring your awareness there. Then on an inhale, lift the torso, lengthen. Exhale, replace the hands by the waist and open the chest. Take a right knee into the chest now, bend the right knee up, turn the knee to the side, and let's take a single leg forward bend. This is Janu Shirshasana. Twist a little bit to the left so your navel starts to line up with the center of the left thigh, and then fold forward on the exhale keeping the left leg strong and straight. Okay, fold forward and breathe deeply here. So we're returning to our natural state as a process. Yoga is a process of sort of peeling back and we have a place with which to safely process some of the things we've got trapped in our body. Think of the mat now 
as your personal little laboratory. It's a place to experiment and let things rise, but be mindful with the breath to what is coming up. Just watch it like a witness. We're removing some of the past from our bodies. Okay, lift up now, bring the right knee up, and extend the right leg forward. Bend your left knee to the chest, knee to the side, and then place the foot. Turn to the right and fold forward over the leg. Okay, lift up on the inhale, lift the left knee up, and let's extend the left leg forward. So the practice is very much about paying attention. That's what this little space is. It's our little laboratory where we experiment. We get to see what we want to let go of, what the obstacles to our natural state are. Let's come to Upavista Konasana. This is the wide straddle. Open the legs wide apart here and flex the feet. Press through the balls of the feet. Let everything on the inside of your leg into the pelvic floor become active. Then lengthen the side of the body. Breathe in and fold forward. Take the sides of your feet, the big toes, or walk your arms through the center and perhaps hold on to the jawline. So stay with the breath and fold forward. Remember to practice persistently yogis at home. It's more important to practice on a daily basis to keep that connection to the joyful state that yoga can give us, that feeling of happiness, that feeling that everything we need is already inside of us. We're just accessing it, that right now. Okay, breathing deep. Wonderful, lift up. Now hold the inside of your knees and draw the knees up. Bend the knees up to the sky. Okay, carefully protecting the knees. And then pull everything forward. Stretch the legs straight forward. Let's go ahead and bend the right knee behind you so the right foot is outside of the right hip. Now you may need padding under the left sit bone. Press all of the toes down in the right foot. Flex the left foot. Keep the waist long. And take the forward bend here and hold your foot or your shin and breathe into the right thigh muscle. Breathe deep into the hips here, folding forward and keeping the knees relatively close. So very intimate process, the yoga process. We're starting to understand our past and we're starting to understand where we want to go. Now, in my practice, it's very useful to connect to teachers that have a lot more experience than me and teachers that embody this state of joy, this state of happiness, this state of well-being. I try to pick teachers that have the temperament that I'd like to gear myself towards. So a little bit of inspiration is very, very useful. Take another deep breath in and breathe out. Now pick your right knee up and extend the leg carefully. Bend your left knee and bring the left foot to the outside of the left hip. Keep the knees close. Now the padding may have to go under the right sit bone. If you're new to the practice, you may need to lift the seat. Keep the right foot flexed. And as you breathe out, fold forward and take the appropriate bind. Now press the left foot down. And again, try to keep the knees relatively close. Intimacy with the breath now. Breathing deeply and exhaling completely. Welcome back, yogis. Today's practice is all about yoga for happiness. And when we first start the yoga practice, we seek health and some of the more obvious physical benefits but there is something else that's usually healed in the process of taking practice. Before we get started now in our backbend sequence, uh, Roque, I'm interested, how, what has the practice tapped you in beyond the initial athletic benefits? 
Beyond the athletic benefits, I think that like just being aware of my breath has helped me be more aware of how I'm acting and speaking to people. Okay. Because I have a big personality and sometimes I can get very loud and very like big and I find myself short of breath and just uh, so now I just learn to soften and take a deep exhale. And stretch the left arm to the side and then bend your right arm to 90 degrees, so the elbow's at 90 degrees. And then what we'll do is we'll bend the right knee and open the right hip, and we'll start to look past the right shoulder for a powerful stretch through the deltoid. If you wanna make this a little more challenging, you can walk your left arm forward so it's above the shoulder. Good, and if you wanna make it even more intense, you can come to your fingertips. Now try to look past the right shoulder so the back of the neck is long. And breathe very deeply into the body. Come back now, square the right hip, and then extend the right arm to the side. Let's bend the left arm to 90 degrees. Now if you want the intensity, you walk the hand in front of the shoulder. So keep the left arm to 90 degrees, and then bend uh, the left knee, open the left hip, and gaze up past the left shoulder. So a very intimate process. Wonderful, come back, square the hips, and then release your forehead to the floor and take the arms behind you. Now press all 10 fingers down, and inhale, lift your head, chest, and legs off the floor. Good, exhale, keep the feet together and pointed. Good, lift higher, breathe in and keep the back of the neck long. Breathe out, another breath in, and then breathe out, come down, come down, and look to one side and shake your tail out, shake the tail out. So the back bends are very useful for processing emotions, allowing things to move that we can hide from. So as we open that side of the body, Perhaps now connect to something you'd like to release, remembering that the mat is a safe place to have these experiences. Now prop yourself up to your forearms, lift the chest, and let's bend the left forearm in front of you. Now look at the elbow so it's a few inches in front of the shoulder, and then press all of the knuckles down. Bend the right knee behind you. This is the half frog, half bekasana, and then catch the right foot, turn your fingers in the direction of the toes and bring the right foot to the outside of the hip. Square your ribs forward and your shoulders forward and breathe deeply into the body. Take another breath in. And on the exhale, release, and let's change sides. Get the right forearm in front of you. Remember the elbow is just a few inches in front of the shoulder. Root the knuckles down, and this time bend the left knee behind you. Catch the foot, turn your fingers in the direction of the toes, and bring the left foot to the outside of the left hip. Square the ribs forward, square the shoulders forward, Keep the back of the neck long and breathing very deep and freeing any sensation in the front thigh, in the shoulders, breathing in. And as you breathe out, let's release. Now take the hands next to the lower ribs, tuck your toes and then push off of the feet and lift the upward dog. And let's stay here for a few breaths. We'll go to downward dog, and then ripple forward to a plank pose. Come forward, and lower the knees, the chest, and the chin. Go to cobra pose, inhale, forehead to the floor, stretch the arms behind you, exhale. Good, bow pose, bend the knees, catch your feet, inhale, exhale. And then inhale, press away, lift high, press the thighs and knees back. Now reach the shoulders forward slightly to oppose the knees and thighs pressing back. Breathing in and breathing out. Inhale, good, come down as you exhale. Let's extend the right arm forward and just for fun, roll to the right, roll over 
That's it. Turn to your back and bend the knees. Place the feet on the floor, hip distance apart. Draw the knees in so the ankles are under the knees. And let's lift up to a half wheel. Lift the lower, middle, and upper back up by pressing into the feet. Now reach the hips high into the air. Lift the chest and then draw the chin away from the chest. Really press into the feet here. Breathing deeply. And breathe out, come down, release the arms. Okay, and now you can repeat that, or let's both go into full wheel. Take the hands under the shoulders. Let the elbows point to the sky. On an inhale, come to your head. And exhale, reroute the hands. Let the armpits slide back towards the tailbone. In breath, press down, lift up. And exhale, heels go to the side. To Welcome back, yogis. You're watching Yoga Sutra now. Today's practice is all about yoga for happiness. Now, one of the ways that yoga channels happiness is just this little rectangle here. It gives us a terrific journey to our inner world, but it's carving out time for ourselves, and that alone can lead to a state of joy. So what we'll literally do now is turn our world upside down in a little playful attitude with an inversion practice. I'll give you guys a perfect setup, and you don't have to jump into it, but you can practice shifting the body weight so that the hips are over the shoulders. So just watch the practice that we'll do. From a long dog, we'll shorten our dog, we'll walk in halfway between the hands and the feet. Now what this should do is give the feeling of the hips over the shoulders. So you're feeling the body weight over the arm bones and where the wrists are. From here, we'll lift the right leg in the air, we'll keep it straight, now there's no need to jump, we'll still get the inversion benefit. On an exhale, you can bend the left knee and lower the right leg. Now a big mistake I see in class is people bend this top knee. Keep the top leg straight because that's your lever. The bottom leg is a spring and the top leg is a lever. So we'll practice lifting just a few times and then switching sides. When it's time to hop, you have an option of lightly taking the hips over the shoulders. But let's practice that swinging motion with a straight leg so we can transfer the weight of the hips over the shoulders. Come into a downward facing dog now. And remember your breath. We're just trying to get a different point of view on all these life situations that perhaps remove us from that state of joy and natural well-being. Okay, on an exhale, soften your knees Walk your feet in halfway between the hands and feet. Good, yogis at home, you should be feeling the lower body weight over the shoulders now. Keep looking forward and trust your gaze. Lift the right leg in the air. Remember to keep the leg straight and keep the hips squared. Now on an exhale, bend the left knee and lower the right leg. And inhale, lift. It's simple, just lift. Good, exhale, bend. Great work, inhale, lift. Beautiful, exhale, bend. Inhale, lift, and let's switch sides. Lower the right leg, take a deep breath in, and a deep breath out. Lift the left leg in the air. Remember to keep the hip squared, the leg is straight. Now on your next exhale, bend the right knee, lower the left leg. Inhale, lift, exhale, bend. Beautiful, inhale, lift, exhale, bend. Once more, inhale, lift, and exhale, bend. Good, lower the left leg and take a child's pose now. Take a child's pose and fold forward and let any anxiety that you have coming up, let that pass to the side in this child's pose and let's try to channel the energy of being a kid. When you were a kid, you were more fearless, you gave your parents a lot of anxiety by jumping into everything you can. We're going to take those hops now lightly from that position in the short dog we want to take the hips over the shoulders and keep the leg strong and perhaps, perhaps scissor the legs together and we gaze at one point. Or successive approximation, five hops, still very useful. Let's come into downward dog. 
Okay, and again, tapping into the present moment, what's going on right now in your body. Walk in halfway on an exhale. Let's lift the right leg in the air. Bend the left knee, lower the right leg. Inhale, lift, hips over shoulders. Good, one, okay, breathe in. And breathe out, two. Now press through the balls of the feet. Keep looking forward, draw in the ribs. Draw in, three. Stay with it, yogis, inhale. Exhale, four, five, four. Good, and come down and scissor the legs and bow forward in a child's pose. And if you've lost your connection to the breath, yogis, reconnect now. The inversions can bring up some anxiety and it can bring up fear. It's as adults that we've learned to really cut off that sense of adventure we have as kids. So let that energy, if it's got any fear coming up, let it just pass to the side. We'll come into a more stable inversion now, which is great for yoga and happiness, is the Shirshasana, the headstand practice. And this is referred to by most masters as the king of the poses, and it has the most health benefits. So let's sit up now on the heels and let's make a fist with the hands. Make a fist with the hands where you interlace the fingers and you close that fist. And if the pinky finger is sticking out, just tuck that in so you have a flat surface for the earth. Place your wrist, forearms, and elbows down and bring the elbows shoulder width, shoulder width. And then you'll take your head in between the bones of the lower arm Tuck your toes into the earth, lift your hips, come into a modified dog, and then walk the feet until the weight of the hips go over the shoulders. This is a good headstand. This is a half headstand. You can stay here. If you want to go further, bend one knee into the chest and point the foot, and then bend the next knee into the chest and point the foot. Then from here, take your knees up to the sky, knees up, knees up. Come right back up and then extend the legs all the way up. Good. And then press through the balls of the feet and stay here and stay focused on the breath. Knees up, knees up. Good. Strong legs. Press through the feet. So a half headstand is very useful, yogis at home. You're still getting the inversion benefit. Breathing in and breathing out. Inhale and exhale. So it's very useful for uh, four to five minutes with this pose. Okay, come down. Good. And let's fold forward now. Fold forward. Folding forward. Good, let's ride. Welcome yogis. Today is all about yoga for happiness. And joining me now is Vishva, the laughing yogi who will lead us in some exercises for lightness and laughter. Welcome. Super to be with you guys here. We are going to enjoy a lot of laughter today. So we have some very simple rules on what we do and how we do it. Let's try and come together a little bit, shall we? Absolutely, we do it standing up. We, whatever we do and whenever we do it, we look directly into each other's eyes. So let's not avert that gaze. <laughs> and we will begin with some warm-up exercises. We'll end up laughing. And if at first you don't succeed, you can fake it till you make it. <laughs> Are we good with that? So let's do the ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Come on. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Let's be playful. Ho, ho, ha, ha. Let's move. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, let's move. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Slight change. We're going to have a bit of a body movement, a bit of a dance. We'll do it. The ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Let's move. Ho, ho, ha.